Now that we know how to use Firestore with Flutter, we're going to see how to continue our authentication process by grabbing the data that we get back from Google Sign In when a user is authenticated and storing that in a user's collection in our database. So our first step is going to be clearing out all the collections that you might have added in the previous section, as well as remove all of the code on your timeline page. So the first step that we're going to take here is when our user is authenticated either through the on current user change listener or sign in silently, we're calling handle sign in. We want to at this point create our user in Firestore with the data that we're being given from Google sign in. So let's, instead of having this print line, execute a function here called create user in Firestore. So we'll call it right here and we'll create it, create this new function underneath. And let's write out some comments, code comments to describe what steps we're going to need to go through. First of all, we need to check to see, check if user exists in users collection in database according to their ID. So that's our first step. And if the user doesn't exist, then we want to take them to the create account page. We want to take them to the create account page where we're going to enable them to set up their profile and they're going to provide whatever username that they want to have associated with their account. So then we're going to get username from create account, use it to make new user document in users collection. Okay, so the first step will be to, we want to check to see if a user exists in our users collection in the database according to their ID. Well, how are we going to get their ID? Fortunately, we don't have to pass down the account data that we're getting from handle sign in. Another way to get the current user data is from Google sign in dot current user. And this will give us the same value, which will store in a user variable that's of the type Google sign in account. And we can get the current user, the currently authenticated users ID from user dot ID. So considering that when we create our user, a new user document, in our database, we're going to link it to this user ID. We can check to see if that user already exists by making a request to our user's collection for that given document based on its ID. So once again, we can make our function an async function and we can await users ref. We first need to create this user's reference, referencing our user's collection that we'll have. So we'll make this up at the top a final users ref variable that's set equal to Firestore. We'll need to import Firestore in the Cloud Firestore package, firestore.instance.collection, and the path is going to be users. So now that we have our users ref, we can await users ref dot document, find the document with the ID of user.id.get, and we'll put the result in a final variable called doc that is a document snapshot. Okay, so now we need to check to see if this document actually exists. So once again, we can use our conditional. We can say if not doc.exists, if doc.exists is not true, then we want to take them to the create account page. Well, how do we do that? How do we take users to a different page? Well, we can use Navigator, and specifically off of Navigator, the push method. So we don't really have any declared routes in our application. We don't have, say, a routes map in our main.dart file, but we can create a route on the fly. The way we can do that is with the material page route, this class. And first of all, we have to pass in context to push, but we can push to a route that we dynamically create with material page route. 
material page route takes a builder, which is a function where we need to provide context and the parameters, and we can return whatever widget that we want to push to. And we want to go to create account. So we'll make sure to import that first of all. And now let's switch over to create account. And here, if we review what we want the final version to look like, this is going to consist of a header. So we'll use our reusable header widget. And then everything else in the page can be put within a single column, a single column widget. And first we're going to have a title, then a form with a text form field, and then a submit button. So let's build out this page with a scaffold. First of all, we'll have our app bar that'll be connected to our reusable header. So we'll make sure to import that. But remember, we need to provide context as the first argument and then the title text, which will be set up your profile. And for the body, we'll have a scrollable list view, where for its children, we'll have a container where for its child, we'll have a single column, as we mentioned, where for its children, we'll, we'll first have a padding widget. And on it, we want to set padding on the top to separate it from our header. So we'll set edge insets dot only top, and that'll be set to 25. For its child, we'll have a center widget to center our text that will be within it. So centers child will be text and the text itself will be create a username, which will have some set style rules where text style will have font size set to 25.0. Then after padding, we'll have another padding widget where in this case, padding is gonna be set on all sides. So we'll use edge insets dot all, and here this will be 16.0. The child here is going to be a container, which is going to contain our form. So its child will be a form widget, where its child will be a text form field that a user can type into. And from here, we'll have a decoration that will be set to input decoration. So we can say, for example, that the border of the form field outline input border. So it's going to give our form field a border. The label text for the input will be username. We can style that with label style. So its text style will have a font size of 15.0. And we'll also add some hint text telling our user that their username must be at least three characters. So this will have some validation. This should be hint text. Then after this padding widget, we'll have a gesture detector, which will be, which will function as our button. So this will have a child of a container where its child will be text, where it will be set to text submit. And we'll style it again with text style. Where color, the color of the text will be colors.white. The font size will be 15. And the font weight will be font weight.bold. We're going to decorate the container to change the background color. We'll do that with box decoration. So the color will be colors.blue. And we're, we'll set the border radius to make this a rounded button. We'll set this to border radius dot circular, the radius of 7.0. So now we should have the basic appearance of our create account form. But the next step is actually taking the text that's typed in to this input and storing it in state so we can send it back to the previous route when we hit the submit button. So the way that we're going to do that is by adding to our text form field an on saved function. So on saved is going to get the value that's typed into the input. We get that in our parameters. And then we can set it to whatever we like. 
So we're going to set this to a state variable called username, which we'll create. We'll make that up at the top in our state class. This will be of type string. And we're only going to execute this on save function when we actually are able to access the current state of the form. And the way that we're going to do that is with the help of a form key. So up at the top, say above our state variable, we'll create a global key, which will be responsible for executing on saved as well as getting the current state of our form. We'll create a global key that's of type form state. We'll execute it to create it and we'll store it within a final variable called underscore form key. So we're going to associate form key with the form by setting its key argument like so. And what that enables us to do is within a function that we execute when we tap on our gesture detector, so we'll add an on tap to gesture detector, it'll be connected to a new function called submit. When we have this submit function, we're going to be able to run on saved and set the value that's typed into our form field, or we'll set it to the username variable by calling underscore form key dot current state dot save. So now that we have text within our username state variable, we can pass it back to our create user and Firestore function in home. So how do we do that? We push this create account route, but how do we go back to the function? Well, the opposite of navigator.push is navigator.pop. So we can call that right here. The first argument that we have to pass to it is context, but if we want to pop back to the previous route and provide a value to it, we can provide that as the second argument. So we'll pass in username to do that. And then back in home, we can get this username value by awaiting navigator.push and we can store the result in a variable called username. So we have our username from create account. Now we're going to move on to our third step. After we get our username, we want to use it to make our new user document in our users collection. We can do that pretty easily by saying users ref dot and we're going to create a new document with a custom ID that's going to be based off of user dot ID. And we want to, as we know, call set data to provide a map with all of the user data that we want for this document. So most of these values are going to come from our current user data from Google sign in. So the ID will have an ID on each of the users. It'll be set to user.id. We'll have our username, of course, from the username variable. A photo URL it will come from user.photo URL, the photo associated with our Google account. Email from user.email. Display name from user. Display name. We'll have a bio associated with each user that will display on their profile page. We'll leave that as an empty string until they till this user fills it out. And then a timestamp. We want a timestamp to serve as a record for when this user was created. So to make this timestamp, we're going to add a variable up at the top, a final variable called timestamp. It's going to be set equal to date time dot now to get timestamp for the current time. And this is going to be of type date time. So we're going to reuse this variable across our app to get the current time when we're creating given a given document. So we'll provide that variable right here. So let's test out what we have. Let's save both home and create account. And one thing that I'd highly recommend, it's not your sign in process isn't going to work correctly. If you don't do this, you're going to need to reuse your logout button. So remember the logout button that we created down here should still be within the build auth screen function. I'd recommend for the time being commenting out your timeline page and instead using your raised button for timeline. So you'll just have it look like this. It'll kind of function as a separate page for now until we build this out. That's going to enable you to easily log out, which I'd recommend you do before we go through this process of providing a username and creating a user in Firestore. 
So let's save that and we will log out, do a hot restart for good measure, and we'll sign in with Google again. And when you sign in, you should automatically be taken to your create account page. When I made a mistake in create account, forgot to set the height and width of the container. So the height is going to be 50 and the width is going to be 350. And we also want to put the child text in a center widget, like so. So that looks a lot better. So now we can add our username and hit submit. And we're taken back to our timeline page, which is right now just a logout button. But if we check our database, we'll likely need to refresh. We should see a user's collection linked to an individual document by its ID. We should have the same ID stored for our user document with the username that we specified. So now whenever a user signs up with Google Sign-In, we are saving their data within our database.